Let me start by thanking uh, Her Lordship for granting um, the committee audience in spite of the short notice for this courtesy call. We acknowledge the fact that these are busy times for the court, especially with the avalanche of election petition cases that are pending before the court. We are grateful once again for granting us the audience for the courtesy visit. As my Lord may be aware, the Senate Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters was inaugurated on 25th September 2019 by His Excellency Senator Dr. Ahmed Ibrahim Lawan, which marked the commencement of his legislative activities in line with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended and the Senate Standing Orders 2015 as amended, which empowered the committee to oversight the federal judiciary. As is the practice, the committee usually pays his lordship, the Honorable, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, as the head of the judicial arm of government, as well as his lordship, the Honorable President of the Court of Appeal, courtesy visits as marks of courtesies and exchange of pleasantries. That is the reason for our coming here today, to keep faith with the time-honored tradition of the committee. The essence of this visit is to enable members of the committee to interact and familiarize themselves with his lordship and other respected justices of the Court of Appeal. Similarly, the visit would avail us the opportunity to keep abreast with the progress made by the court in the last couple of years and also interact with you on the challenges facing the court, being one of the widely spread courts with divisions across the country. This, no doubt, would enable us to make appropriate legislative interventions in times ahead for the betterment of the Court of Appeal. My Lord, there is no gain saying the fact that judiciary plays a very crucial role in the sustenance and deepening of democratic core values, and the Court of Appeal, being the second in the hierarchy of courts, cannot be an exception. In this vein, the legislature, whose main role is to make laws, would, through the exercise of its legislative functions, make necessary interventions to strengthen and guarantee the independence of the judiciary, which is regarded as the last hope of the citizenry. In this connection, we would appeal to the judiciary as a matter of concern that no sacrifice is too much for the sustenance and deepening of our democracy. Therefore, all hands must be on deck to ensure that the principle of separation of powers is respected and sustained in order to insulate the judiciary from any form of undue influence or interference from any arm of government, political parties, or individuals in whatever form or guise in the performance of its functions. On this note, we would advocate as always for transparent, robust, and efficient justice delivery system, which is a catalyst for the nation's economic growth and development. However, it must be emphasized that the success of effective justice system is not only measured by the number of cases dispensed with 
but also with corresponding welfare package of practitioners in the system. As a result, this committee will work hard to ensure that the welfare needs of judges of the Court of Appeal and indeed the support staff of the court are addressed through appropriate legislative interventions. In this regard, we must reiterate that funding concerns, which is key to the successes of the judiciary, is a matter of uppermost and utmost concern to us and must be treated with all the seriousness it deserves. We have observed that in the last couple of years, even though there have been improvements in the budgetary allocations of the judiciary, more still need to be done to fund judicial administration. Therefore, the clamor for more funding for the judiciary to address issues of infrastructural decay, electrofitting and automation of courtrooms in line with global best practices to ensure that our judiciary compete favorably with its counterparts in other jurisdictions to the committee is justified and should be brought to front burner of public discourse. The committee would work assiduously to ensure proper funding for the judiciary. In this regard, the committee, through the instrumentality of its oversight responsibilities, regularly would ensure that court projects and facilities across the country are inspected. And most importantly, my lords, the committee would work in collaboration with the judiciary to ensure that laws which impede effective and efficient administration of justice are reviewed with a view to repositioning the judiciary for the challenges of the 21st century. Finally, I wish to assure His Lordship that the Ninth Senate under the dynamic leadership of His Excellency, Senator Dr. Ahmed Ibrahim Lawan, President of the Senate, is poised towards embarking on legislative intervention measures that would enhance the growth and independence of the Nigerian judiciary to meet the yearnings and aspirations of Nigerians with regards to effective and efficient justice delivery and respect for the rule of law. On this note, I wish to once again thank His Lordship for granting us audience in spite of her crowded shadows. Thank you and God bless you. We wish you very successful tenure of office during the ninth session of the National Assembly. And then at the same time, I must also welcome you to the Court of Appeal. I have earlier welcomed you, but I still say welcome. And then you apologize for, <laughs> it doesn't matter. We are just the younger brothers of the Supreme Court. So it doesn't matter if you address our brothers, elder brothers first before coming to the Court of Appeal. We are all part of one family. So your apology is accepted. The Court of Appeal as it stands today has 16 divisions with about 86 justices who are spread all over the country depending on the number of um, busy divisions. Like in Abuja, as I told you earlier, we have eight justices. In Enugu, we have six. Enugu, Ibadan, and uh, Benin, I think, with Kaduna and Joss. That's where we have our heavy lords. So we have about six justices. And then in others, we have about four, four per division. But in others where we have less busy schedules, we have three justices, like in Sokoto and uh, Makodi. We intend to appoint more justices of the Court of Appeal because of our heavy workload. And then we intend to have four additional divisions of the Court of Appeal. 
most likely before the end of the year so that we can share the workload like in Kaduna where we have only five justices now the heavy load is coming from Kano State so that's where we intend to have a division in uh, Oweri division no Enugu division we also have another heavy load so we are creating another division in Anambra State in uh, the northeast <coughs> Gwambi would be another place where we are going to set up a division and then in the south south we intend to create another division in Delta State they have quite a heavy load it's now covered by Benin Division our structures are becoming a bit dilapidated because of the funding. <coughs> it has been reducing over the years. I remembered in 2012, our budgetary allocation was about 15 billion, but it has been reduced so that last year we got only 13.2 billion. The courts of appeal divisions in Enugu and Benin were constructed, I think, a very, very long time ago by the Federal Ministry of Works, who had no idea of what a court of appeal should be like. They just built a courtroom. The chambers are very small, and then with the flood, with the rains in Benin, the court of appeal now is almost coming down. We have to relocate. Recently, just last week, we had to relocate to a temporary site. The governor had promised to give us one of the courts after they've moved, but they've not moved. But we were forced to relocate because the waters, whenever it rains, it just goes into the court. It spoils our equipment. It spoils our books. So we hope to start a new court of appeal altogether or to build a new court of appeal altogether. The same thing with that of Enugu. We've been able to renovate about three or four with the little funding we've been having. We've completed, almost completed a Lauren and uh, Yola division. They would be commissioned soon. Oweri, we've completed it, but we are taken aback by the rains when some of our roofing went away, so it's another problem. We've renovated uh, Kalaba to a very good standard. Potakot was renovated for us by the governor. He's now renovating our official quarters. So these are some of the challenges for us. Ideally, we should have up to a oh, very, very good premises where we can work without any hindrance. But these are the challenges. Some of our official quarters are still being renovated. Some had been renovated to the standard, to very good standards, but we still lack the proper funding to renovate the other ones. Our justices' salary has not been looked into for quite a while. I remembered when I came into the Court of Appeal, I think we've had just two or three since 28, 2008 or whatever. There has not been any changes from our salaries. We call our salary structure <coughs> no promotion because once you are appointed, Unless the salaries are reviewed, you continue on the same salary scale, the same salary structure, the same allowances. Times are changing. I think a good consideration should be given to the change of our salary structures and our allowances. We've been talking about having housing for our justices either on appointment or on retirement. It has still not come to fruition. We will still pursue it to see if it could be part of our conditions of service so that upon appointment, since we are nomads per se, 
because justices of the Court of Appeal don't stay in their states of origin, they move from one place to another. They don't have housing to house their families when they move. Sometimes they would have to rent for them and then they have to stay in uh, official quarters while in their site of uh, in their location of uh, being in their temporary uh, in their temporary residences I would say so we are in the habit of just packing a bag and moving whenever you are posted you cannot challenge it you cannot do anything the court of appeal as we are we are a unity court that's what we call ourselves we are brothers we relate to one another as you can see the whole of nigeria is represented in any division of the court of appeal that's the way we work that's the way we've been working and then we've been trying with the challenges we've been trying with the workload and we've been doing our best to ensure that we do what is expected of us. You are our partners in progress. I believe, as has been promised by the chairman, you'd work hand with us to ensure that our challenges are being addressed. At the moment, we finish with the tribunals. Most of them have completed their assignments, maybe I think about three or four who are yet to complete their assignments. So we are going to have quite a number of cases coming to the Court of Appeal on Appeal. They will be in the Court of Appeal for the next two months. So we are going to be busy. I think this is what I'm going to be busy. We are going to be busy. We are going to be busy, <laughs> we are going to be busy because they might have to be moved from one division to another, but I'm sure we are up to the task. We thank you for coming to see us. We thank you for listening to us, and we welcome you once again. Thank you very much. <laughs>